I want to ask you a question, and that is, what is in your life's blueprint? A great deal of what Brother King shared was missed by mainstream society. And the thing that got him killed was when he started talking about the economics of it all. And eventually we're going to be able to find the whole point. But 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 honestly, our mother had shared the sentiment of, I don't care if you got to shovel shit for a living, but if you do, if that's all you can do, you best be the best shit shoveling this motherfucker on the face of the planet. That's our work ethic. This is the most important and crucial period of your lives for what you do now and what you decide now at this age may well determine which way your life shall go. And whenever a building is constructed, you usually have an architect who draws a blueprint. And that blueprint serves as the pattern, as the guide, as the model for those who are to build the building. And a building is not well erected without a good, sound, and solid blueprint. Now each of you is in the process of building the structure of your lives. And the question is whether you have a proper, a solid, and a sound blueprint. And I want to suggest some of the things that should be in your life's blueprint. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodiness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Now that means that you should not be ashamed of your color. You know, it's very unfortunate that in so many instances, our society has placed a stigma on the Negro's color. And you know there are some Negroes who are ashamed of themselves, but don't be ashamed of your color. Don't be ashamed of your biological features. Somehow you must be able to say in your own lives and really believe it, I am black but beautiful. And believe it in your own. And therefore, you need not be lured into purchasing cosmetics advertised to make you lighter. Neither do you need to process your hair to make it appear straight. I have good hair, and it is as good as anybody else's hair in the world. And we've got to believe that. Now, in your life's blueprint, be sure that you have that a principle of somebody. Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have as a basic principle the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. You're going to be deciding as the days and the years unfold what you will do in life, what your life's work will be. Once you discover what it will be, set out to do it, and to do it well. And I say to you, my young friends, that doors are opening to each of you. Doors of opportunity are opening to each of you that were not open to your mothers and to your fathers. And the great challenge facing you is to be ready to enter these doors as they open. 
Ralph Waldo Emerson, the great essayist, said in a lecture back in 1871 that if a man can write a better book or preach a better sermon or make a better mousetrap than his neighbor, even if he builds his house in the woods, the world will make a beaten path to his door. That hadn't always been true, but it will become increasingly true. And so I would urge you to study hard, to burn the midnight oil. I would say to you, don't drop out of school, and I understand all of the sociological reasons why we often drop out of school. But I urge you, in spite of your economic plight, in spite of the situation that you are forced to live so often with intolerable conditions, stay in school. And when you discover what you're going to be in life, set out to do it as if God Almighty called you at this particular moment in history to do it. And just don't set out to do a good Negro job, but do a good job that anybody could do. Don't set out to be just a good Negro doctor, a good Negro lawyer, a good Negro school teacher, a good Negro preacher, a good Negro barber, a beautician, a, a good Negro skilled laborer. For if you set out to do that, you have already flunked your matriculation exam for entrance into the University of Integration. Set out to do a good job and do that job so well that the living, the dead, or the unborn couldn't do it any better. Falls your love to be a street sweeper. Sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Leontine Price sings before the Metro Metropolitan Opera. And sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. <laughs> if you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a scrub in the valley. But be the best little scrub on the side of the rill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or you fail. Be the best of whatever you are. <laughs> we always, we already have some noble examples black men and black women who demonstrated to us that human nature cannot be cataloged. They and their own lives have walked through long and desolate nights of oppression, and yet they've risen up and plunged against cloud-filled nights of affliction, new and blazing stars of inspiration. And so from an old slave cabin of Virginia's hills, Booker T. Washington rose up be one of America's great leaders, he lit a torch in Alabama, and darkness fled in that setting. Yes, you should know this because it's in your own city, from a poverty-stricken area of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Marin Anderson rose up to be the world's greatest contralto so that a Toscanini could say that a voice like this comes only once in a century. And Sibelius of Finland could say, my roof is too low for such a voice from the red hills of Gordon County, Georgia. And the arms of a mother who could neither read nor write, Roland Hayes rose up to be one of the world's great singers and carried his melodious voice into the palaces and mansions of kings and queens from crippling circumstances. And there came a George Washington Carver to carve for himself an imperishable niche in the annals of science. There was a star in the diplomatic sky. And then came Ralph Bunch, the grandson of a slave preacher. And he reached up and grabbed it and allowed it to shine in his life with all of its scintillating beauty. There was a star in the athletic sky. 
And then came Jackie Robinson in his day and Willie Mays in his day with their powerful bats and their calm spirits. Then came Jesse Owens with his fleet and dashing feet. Then came Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali with their educated fists. All of them came to tell us that we can be somebody and to justify the conviction of the poet, fleecy locks and black complexion cannot forfeit nature's claim. Skin may differ, but affection dwells in black and white the same. And if I were so tall as to reach the pole, or to grasp the ocean at a span, I must be measured by my soul. The mind is the standard of the man. And finally, <laughs> and finally in your life's blueprint, must be a commitment to the eternal principles of beauty, love, and justice. Don't allow anybody to pull you so low as to make you hate them. Don't allow anybody to cause you to lose your self-respect to the point that you do not struggle for justice. However young you are, you have a responsibility to seek to make your nation a better nation in which to live. You have a responsibility to seek to make life better for everybody. And so you must be involved in the struggle for freedom and justice. Now in this struggle for freedom and justice, there are many constructive things that we all can do and that we all must do. And we must not give ourselves to those things which will not solve our problems. You've heard the word nonviolent and you've heard the word violent. I happen to believe in nonviolence. We've struggled with this method with young people and adults alike all over the South, and we have won some significant victories, and we've got to struggle with it all over the North because the problems are as serious in the North as they are in the South. But I believe as we struggle with these problems, we've got to struggle with them with a method that can be militant, but at the same time does not destroy life or property. And so our slogan must not be burn, baby, burn. It must be build, baby, build. <laughs> yes, our slogan must be learn, baby, learn, so that we can earn, baby, earn. And with a powerful commitment, I believe that we can transform dark yesterdays of injustice into bright tomorrows of justice and humanity. Let us keep going toward the goal of selfhood, toward the realization of the dream of brotherhood, and toward the realization of the dream of understanding goodwill. Let nobody stop us. I close by quoting once more the man that the young lady quoted. That magnificent black bard who has now passed on, Langston Hughes. One day he wrote a poem entitled Mother to Son. And the mother didn't always have a grammar right, but she uttered words of great symbolic profundity. Well, son, I'll tell you. Life for me ain't been no crystal stad. It's had tax in it. Boards torn up, places with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time, I's been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So, boy, don't you stop now. Don't you sit down on the steps because you find this kind of hard. But I'm still going, boy. I'm still climbing. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Well, life for none of us has been a crystal stair. But we must keep moving. We must keep going. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl, but by all means, keep moving.